Hi, I'm Ohio Attorney General Mike DeWine. Each day in the Attorney General's office, we work to ensure the freedoms that are guaranteed in the United States Bill of Rights. We all know its provisions by heart, freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom of the press. But do you know the story of its creation? Did you know that without the Bill of Rights, we might not have the Constitution or be the America we are today? During the 1787 Constitutional Convention, George Mason, a delegate from Virginia, proposed a Bill of Rights. But other delegates to the convention didn't see the need. To them, the Bill of Rights was already built into the text of the Constitution. Without drafting a Bill of Rights, the framers signed the Constitution and returned to their home states to help ratify it. To become effective, nine out of the 13 states had to ratify the Constitution, but many feared the Constitution gave too much power to the federal government. Two opposing groups emerged, the Federalists and the Anti-Federalists. If these two groups could not reach agreement on the Constitution, there was danger that it would not be ratified. The Federalists, led by Alexander Hamilton, James Madison, and John Jay, published the Federalist Papers, which argued that the country needed a strong federal government that was limited to those powers expressly listed in the Constitution. Alexander Hamilton said, A firm union will be the utmost moment to the peace and liberty of the states as a barrier against domestic faction and insurrection. The Anti-Federalists, led by Patrick Henry, Elbridge Gerry, and George Clinton, wanted strong state governments, with the federal government secondary to the states. They also wanted the Constitution to contain more explicit protections for the rights of citizens. One Anti-Federalist said, I had rather be a free citizen of the small Republic of Massachusetts than an oppressed subject of the great American Empire. Most states agreed with the Anti-Federalists, and by January 1788, only five states had ratified the Constitution. Delaware, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Georgia, and Connecticut. In fact, North Carolina refused to ratify the Constitution without a Bill of Rights. Eventually, the sides reached a compromise. The Constitution would be ratified, but amendments would be added. These amendments would spell out the rights of individuals and the states. These amendments were called the Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights includes the first 10 amendments to the Constitution. Those amendments set out the rights of the people and the principle that any powers not expressly given to the federal government are reserved to the states. The Bill of Rights ensures that individual citizens are free from an overreaching government and guarantees specific rights and freedoms. For example, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, the right to bear arms, freedom from illegal searches and seizures, due process of law, the right to remain silent when questioned by police, the right to an attorney, freedom from cruel or unusual punishment, the right to a jury. The Ninth and Tenth Amendments establish the concept of federalism. The Ninth Amendment makes clear the Bill of Rights is not exhaustive and that people enjoy certain unwritten freedoms, meaning that rights not contained in the Bill of Rights are still retained by our citizens and by the states. The Tenth Amendment establishes that all other governmental powers are retained by the states. This system of federal and state governments, each with its own independent role to play, is called federalism. Federalism's brilliance is that it leaves local matters, such as policing and firefighting, to local governments, while giving issues of national concern, such as foreign policy and national defense, to the federal government. This allows state government to make better laws and policies for its citizens. 17 other amendments have been passed in the 200 years since the Bill of Rights. Perhaps the most important set of amendments were passed during a period of time known as the Reconstruction Era after the Civil War. One of the root causes of the Civil War was the issue of slavery, which was prevalent in the South. In the midst of the Civil War, the U.S. Supreme Court handed down a monumental win for abolitionists. In 1859, a free black man from Ohio helped a slave escape from Kentucky. Kentucky charged the man with theft and ordered Ohio to return him to Kentucky for prosecution. Ohio refused. 
1861, Ohio Attorney General Christopher Walcott argued against extradition before the U.S. Supreme Court. Ohio succeeded, and the case became the leading authority on this issue for over a hundred years. As the war was coming to a close, the country debated how to repair the Union. Part of this debate involved protecting the rights of former slaves, while still bringing the southern states back into the Union. Between 1865 and 1870, three amendments were passed by Congress and ratified by the states. These amendments built on the protections of the Bill of Rights to abolish slavery and to protect the basic rights of former slaves. They are known as the Reconstruction Amendments. The 13th Amendment abolished slavery and gave Congress the power to enforce the prohibition of slavery. The 14th Amendment gave all former slaves U.S. citizenship. Before the 14th Amendment, none of the amendments applied to the states. The 14th Amendment changed that. No state shall deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of the law, nor shall any state deny to any person the equal protection of the laws. The 15th Amendment prohibits states and the federal government from denying a citizen the right to vote based on race, color, or previous condition of servitude. The 15th Amendment did not, however, apply to gender. Women waited another 50 years to vote. Despite the ratification of the Reconstruction Amendments, racial discrimination and persecution continued. The U.S. Supreme Court initially interpreted the Reconstruction Amendments narrowly. In 1896, the court ruled that segregation did not violate the 13th or 14th Amendments so long as facilities were separate but equal. As a result of the Civil Rights Movement, the Reconstruction Amendments have assumed greater meaning. Perhaps the most famous example is the Supreme Court's decision in Brown v. Board of Education. In 1954, 89 years after the end of the Civil War, the Supreme Court overruled the separate but equal decision and found that public school segregation violated the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. In the years following Brown v. Board of Education, the 14th Amendment was expanded to include far more issues than just race. The court has applied the 14th Amendment to interracial marriage, searches and seizures, and even the 2000 election results between George Bush and Al Gore. The Bill of Rights was created to protect our citizens from overreach by the government. Fearful that the federal government would be too powerful, like the English Crown, our founders drafted the Bill of Rights to give Americans irrevocable freedoms. The Bill of Rights did much more than that. It helped save our young country. Without it, our Constitution may not have been ratified at all.